What's up everybody? My name is Martin and welcome to a new video. Today we are visiting the beautiful countryside of Germany. And right now we are at a really amazing location which you might recognize from the history books or if you're a gamer might recognize from Call of Duty World War II. So right now we are visiting the Remagen Bridge or also known as the Ludendorff Bridge. You can see the uh, entrance in the mountain on the other side and uh, the story goes that the 9th Armored Division came here and was to liberate the bridge. Well, the Germans rigged the bridge with explosives and it was supposed to, uh, to blow as soon as the Americans arrived, but uh, the, the explosives uh, were not set. So the Americans were able to capture the bridge and um, continue the rest into Germany. And since this was the only bridge in a wide area, this was really of importance. So down there is a museum, which we're going to visit later. And you have to imagine that on that hill on the other side, there were um, sniper locations, uh, there was artillery on there. And uh, yeah, we must be held to, uh, to capture this bridge. Also, I want to point out that in these towers in front of here, there were machine gun nests and snipers. Now I have to check my resources to uh, tell you a little story about the tower. Um, the leader of the first platoon, known as, and I have to pronounce his name correct, Delicio from New York City, silenced the machine gun fire on the right tower. So that would be the one with the American flag on top. Um, by rushing up the stairs, capture, uh, capturing the two-man crew, uh, Sergeant Chinhart, uh, assisted by S uh, Staff Sergeant Samel um, and Private First Class Messi, took care of the machine gun tower and the, uh, of the machine gun in the left tower, and they threw the machine gun in the uh, in the Rhine River, which you can see streaming right down there. So it's quite a funny story, but. Um, as you can imagine, this would be the only bridge in the in a vast area, so it was <laughs> defended really well. So this started out as a uh, railway bridge, and to get the troops across, they lay uh, wooden boards on the uh, on the tracks. Um, as I t uh, mentioned earlier, the bridge was rigged with explosives, and right in front of the bridge. Right over there, you can see a big bomb thing shaped. I think it's a bomb, I'm not sure. But um, it was supposed to, uh, to blow a big hole in front of the bridge so the tanks couldn't get across. Well, eventually on the 7th of March, the bridge was captured and 100 25,000 American troops were able to cross the bridge. Um, <laughs> Ten days later, uh, the Germans attempted several times to blow up the bridge, and yeah, on the 17th of March, they succeeded. So the entire bridge was blown up. And possibly some parts of the bridge might be on the bottom of the Rhine River still. I'm not sure about that, but uh, really amazing place to visit. <laughs> it uh, took us two years to plan this trip But uh, yeah, I'm really happy to be here finally and You have to imagine this is a really steep mountain As you can see it goes straight up so The story goes that it was really really hard for the American troops to uh, to get up there and take care of the snipers uh, 
eventually they succeeded, but um, it must have been on a great cost. So, we're going uh, downstairs and uh, go check out the museum, because I'm really excited to visit that as well. So, let's go. So, the place I was standing on is this little deck right here. And uh, the in-between section has been, uh, I think, blown up <laughs> as well. And right here you can still see a little piece of the wall. Yeah, here's like nothing. And uh, to reach the museum, you go down this uh, narrow path. Ah man, this is a shame that they put graffiti on the wall here. I always hate when I do that on old locations. Yeah, there's some steps right here. And of course, since this has been uh, the 9th Armored Division, we're the first to arrive here. I couldn't help myself to put on my, inf uh, my armored division uh, impression so as you can see right there's the, the deck I was standing on first and some big boulders and the second arch is still intact and in Call of Duty you would uh, come from that direction and you have to fight your way just a little bit up this uh, hill here before uh, yeah entering this piece right here let's go check out uh, this part first so it was first um, an arch bridge I'll post a picture right now so you can see what it looked like so it must have been uh, quite a big bang when the bridge go, uh, went up. Right now you can uh, see a boat crossing. And right there would be the, uh, the entrance to the, to the tunnel. So as you can see the bridge tr uh, stretched for uh, quite, a, quite a bit. Right here there's a sign that says uh, Frieden Museum Brücke von Remagen which would be the Remagen Bridge and right here oh, let me zoom out a little bit oh, it's already zoomed out that would be the front of this uh, side let's go check out what the uh, here, 9th Infantry Division Headquarters and Headquarters of the 9th Infantry Division Battery of the 9th Infantry Division Artillery 9th Medical Battalion All right. So the bridge would look like that That is the side of the 9th Armored Division Oh, 99th Infantry Division was here as well. And the Belgians were here too. Yeah. It's a shame from the graffiti on there. Let's go see what this were. So I'm not too sure what this is. I'm gonna ask for a translation and uh, we'll let you know in a little bit. Always useful to have a translator with you. <laughs> so this is a, a bearing uh, used on the original bridge and they took it out of the Rhine. And um, most parts that they 
also took out of the Rhine were used over the Ahr uh, River in Sinzig, which is uh, yeah, just a little bit down the... How far is the Sinzig from here? I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we don't know. But uh, it will be in that direction. Um, I was also recently reading in an article that they would want to build, uh, rebuild the bridge due to... Um, yeah, the, the bridges in bet uh, between here uh, are quite a few kilometers away, so yeah, it would be uh, just make life for the citizens of Remagen a little bit more easy if they have a bridge right here. So that's why they would rebuild it. I'm not too sure if there would be uh, there would be the actual arch bridge that it was here, but uh, you can also see a little bit right here. So yeah. I wonder what it uh, will go look like, but I'm not sure when the building starts, so let's take a look around here. You can see a uh, defending post right here. I'm going up the stairs. Oh, they would just end go to a door but it's probably locked right now so but yeah cool 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 let's go into the museum here's some more information about the bridge here's what it uh, would have been looked like uh, the railroad bridge at Remagen called the Ludendorff bridge as I mentioned earlier was planned in 1912 and built during the First World War from 1916 to 1918 to bring troops to the Western Front. In World War II it gained its still existing fame when on March 7, 1945 soldiers of the 9th US Armored Division unexpectedly captured it undestroyed. This shortened the war by many months, saving the lives of innumerable people. On March 17th 1945 it suddenly collapsed and took uh, 30 American soldiers with, uh, with it to their death. Since 1980, and since 1980 these bridge towers on the left side of the Rhine have been back home to the Peace Museum uh, yeah. from the Remagen Bridge. So that's the story behind it. It's also quite funny because right here and right here they show the uh, how high the water has come and this was the highest point uh, on the 1st of January in 1926 so also high water in 1920 and high water on 1935 1993 uh, 1995, excuse me. So let's enter the museum. So we've entered the museum and right here we're going up the stairs. Yeah. Oh, look. It's quite dirty actually, but it's a German helmet there, M42. That would be American boots, I think. Ah, oh, it's really hard to see. It's a shame. There's an American meat can or mess tin. Yeah, 40 helmet. There's an American helmet. I'm not too sure what this is actually. If you know, please let me know in the comments down below. A German telephone and some other items. And here you can look outside. Crazy to be in here. Oh wow. <laughs> you can see what I was 
Just pause the video if you want to read it. Oh, there's nothing here. So this uh, plaquette says, uh, the watch on the Rhine, in the everyday life of the soldiers at the Remagen Bridge. Uh, during the first years of the war, the soldiers at the bridge uh, was only for protection. Um, and it wasn't until the landing uh, on the 6th of June, uh, 6th of June, excuse me, uh, in Normandy, uh, before the Allies started attacking this bridge. And uh, yeah, it was uh, quite heavily bombed in this area. And you can see some other pictures here as well. Um, during the bombing raids, the women and children would flee uh, to the other side of the bridge to uh, find protection. Here you can see that they put the wooden boards on there so the vehicles could pass. Some more pictures over here. Now we go up the stairs now. So this would be the right tower. And it was said that in, on this tower there would be snipers. Trying to protect the bridge. Here there's a famous picture. They enlarged uh, that picture. This would probably be a replica of the sign but uh it's really cool you can see some uh, b51s i think these are photos of the remagen village And he, you can see a makeshift uh, bridge, so the vehicles could still pass into Germany. Like I said earlier, um, if you played Call of Duty, you'd clearly re recognize these uh, steps. And it's quite funny that they, uh, that you can actually see it in real life now. <clears throat> this tower would be protected by snipers. You can see a ton of uh, German duct tags and this uh, roll of wire. Uh, it says on the plate that um, the roll of wire was found at a POW camp in uh, Remagen. And uh, the, the Erkennungsmarker were from, um, I think, prisoners of war, which were inside the camp. Uh, but most of them, uh, on a few exceptions, actually survived the war. Maybe they just threw away their duct tags or... Uh, yeah, I don't know, but... It's nice that they found, uh, found the pieces. And just look how uh, thick that wire is. I think these are just some uh, artifacts that they found around here. In the area, <clears throat> uh, 
<clears throat> yeah, you would be able to uh, get on the roof, but uh, that's not for us, sadly. Uh, let me see, right on this side, we have now a nice view. Oh man. That hill looks so crazy. Just to imagine that there was filled with snipers and artillery on top. And then having to climb up there. It's crazy, man. Alright, we are gonna continue our way to the other tower. So, as, uh, as I said earlier, this uh, area was pretty heavily bombed. Uh, before the bridge was taken, and here you have some photographs of what the area would uh, would have been looked like. This is from a uh, air raid on 2nd of January 1945. Once again, nice view of the river. So this would be the top uh, floor of the second building. Once again, you can get access to the rooftop there. Not for us, sadly, but... Uh, and this would be the, the room where they captured, captured the, uh, the machine gunner and uh, threw the machine guns in the river. A little overview from the outside. Windows are dirty, actually. The area around the village is really beautiful. It has some nice hills as you can see. Some nice old buildings in the back against the mountain or the hills, whatever you want to call it. And I wanted to point out this uh, sign right here. It says uh, the dead of the Second World War, 50 to 55, uh, 55 million people. The soldiers and the civilians. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Those numbers are unbelievable. And I said it in another video. Everybody thinks uh, the Germans were bad, but uh, the Russians had uh, by far the most numbers. It's crazy. All right. We're going back down again. So we're now in the basement of the bridge and uh, this is about the, the, the pre-war years. So during the construction and at the end of the First World War you can see soldiers crossing here. It actually looks like a Dutch uniform, I'm not sure about that actually. but. Yeah, soldiers crossing the bridge again. I'll show you this area for a little bit because I was amazed by these photos. Because, uh, as you can see on the sign outside, they were building the bridge in, uh, in 1916. And uh, it's just crazy to imagine that they, back then they were able to, to build uh, the, the tunnel. All very uh, primitive, of course, with the wooden beams and uh, keep it all up, not like nowadays. And check out the machine here. Old railroad cars. And here's a piece of a track. Maybe some. Beam from a train. Well, that would be the, uh, the tour through the museum. I'm going to uh, going outside again. Mm -hmm. 
uh, give you some shots from uh, from the bridge or what is left of it and then uh, that was it for this video uh, thank you for watching if you have any questions uh, feel free to ask down below in the comments um, if you enjoyed this video please leave a thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next video bye bye